Welcome to the Today's Leader Podcast. Building Tomorrow's Best Leaders, Today. Way to go, guys. Way to go. Keep it going. Good job, guys. All right, Paul. I see you. Right, John, let's finish. Oh, let's go. Hey there, it's Coach Carl here and welcome to episode 399 of the Today's Leader podcast, Building Tomorrow's Best Leaders Today. Now, we provide proven expert advice and strategies for leaders at all levels who want to go to the next level, whether it's a career leap or whether it's business growth that you're chasing, we can help. If you are an emerging and ambitious leader, make sure you check out the Emerging Leaders Masterclass at tomorrowsbestleaders.com. Leverage your potential and prepare yourself today for the next role tomorrow. Make sure you get over there, tomorrowsbestleaders.com. Now, many leaders wear their burnout like a badge of honor. It's seemingly, it's like they seemingly will themselves to the brink of breakdown. And we supplement this often with poor lifestyle choices, leading to continued stress, pressure, and poor health. And ultimately then bringing strains to relationships and our own personal well-being. That is until we reach the inevitability of it all, where we're unable to execute effectively our roles and our responsibilities and ultimately breaking down some of the most important things in our lives. Today's guest is on a quest to stop all of that. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to Nate Palmer. Now, Nate is a fitness and uh, nutrition expert, coach, speaker, and a writer who believes in being in incredible shape and that being in incredible shape provides a massive advantage in business, focus, and relationships. He's a dad, a husband, and the number one best-selling author of The Million Dollar Body Method and Passport Fitness. Now, Nate helps business owners and entrepreneurs improve their physical fitness, their finances, and family time using fitness and nutrition as what he calls force multipliers. So we multiply the positive benefits in our life by being in great shape. So make sure you tune in today and see how later on the five-day sugar detox that uh, Nate offers can help work for you in creating more energy and performance in the roles that you have. Now, after a word from our sponsor, Think and Grow Business, please join me in welcoming Nat, Nate Palmer to the podcast. The podcast is brought to you by Think and Grow Business, the home of the Think and Grow Business Mastermind. If you're serious about growing your business, get serious and join a mastermind group today. Find out more at thinkandgrowbusiness.com.au. And it's my pleasure to welcome to the Today's Leader podcast, Building Tomorrow's Best Leaders Today, author, number one best-selling author of The Million Dollar Body Method. Please welcome Nate Palmer. How are you today, Nate? I'm doing great. It's so good to see you, Tony. Thanks for having me on the show. I can feel the energy coming through the uh, the camera there, Nate. So Uh you're you're in Arizona. I'm in Brisbane. And as we were just uh, talking a little bit off air, Tuesday is going to be good day for you. So that this is, I'm from the future. <laughs> I've always <laughs> wanted to say that. Hey, Nate, tell me a little bit about the Nate Palmer story. So as, as it pertains to fitness and, and like my kind of my career path, I feel like there's three main aspects to my story. Number one, I was, a. Uh, are you ready for this? Are you ready for me? Just yep. like, just rant. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Because here it comes, I'm just Tony. preparing. <laughs> So basically when I was like 12 years old, my mom took my little sisters to school. And while I was home by myself, someone broke into my house, broke down, broke one of the windows, came in the back door and then came. I heard, I grabbed a steak knife out of the knife block. I hid under my bed and I heard him come down my hallway and pound on my door. And I'm 12 years old and I'm losing my mind. I'm so, so scared. 
Now, I don't want to keep you on the edge of your seat, Tony. I did survive the experience. I am alive today, so all good. But I know in that moment that like my 12-year-old brain was like, I need to never let anyone treat me like this again. I never mm. want to feel this powerlessness, the lack of autonomy, like someone has taken all recourse away. And I was like, well, how do you do that? Mm. I know. It's bigger muscles and it's neck tattoos. That's what we got to do. Yeah. And so that was kind of my like – I became obsessed with physical culture and I was never good at it. I never really got into it, but like, that's where I really came from of like, I need to, to build muscle, to avoid pain, to run away from yeah. fear. Then kind of when I was graduating from college, this is 2008, I shirked pretty much hundred percent of my studies on business and psychology in order to read all about how do you build muscle? What kind of nutrition? Mm. How should I train? I read thousands and thousands and thousands of articles and I didn't read anything from my school. I made it through just very barely. And I was like, well, I'll just become a personal trainer while I try to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. Yeah. So I got a, got a job as a personal trainer in a big, in a big box gym. And I liked it so much that I quit and got a office job because <laughs> I thought I was supposed to three months later, I quit that job and opened my own gym because I was like, this is the literal worst. And if I stay here very much longer, I'm definitely going to kill myself. Yeah. And then the third real time, like for, for me, the big, a big change is, um, 2015, I started working pretty much full online and I was just shipping off workout programs. Tony, I was like, mm. Hey, here's, here's this, do this exercise, do bench press, do legs, like curls, like and do squats, mm. whatever else. And people were not getting results when they worked with me. I'm a great personal trainer. In 2015, I was like, I was, I had all these certifications. I was awesome. My clients loved me. Um, and I thought, you know what, this is going to translate directly into being an online personal trainer. It did not. I was a terrible mm. online coach to start. So in 2018, I was working with a client and he was like, Hey, I got about 20 kilos to lose. I got a new business that I just started. I got, I'm driving 10 to 12 hours a day. I don't know if that is a metric. Um, <laughs> Um, I got a new baby on the way and I also yeah. am going to eat out five times per, per week. So okay. he's like, I, but like the thing is, it's not like I need, I can't train. I'm not going to lose. Like, I don't need to lose weight, whatever. Like I just can't even put that, put that aside. I just have no energy when I get home mm. to my kids. I have to watch ESPN for, for 30 minutes before I can even hang out with them. I just crush. I drink three Red Bulls all, every single day. Mm. What can you do for my energy? I was like, okay, cool. Let's put together a program that fits all those stipulations you just gave mm. me. So I gave him something that worked with his bio rhythms, something that worked with his yeah. natural circadian rhythms that helped him burn fat for energy, but also sleep really well so that he had time all day long to work on his business. And when he got home, he still had energy for his family. Mm. And um, at, at that point, like two months later, I was like, man, how's it going, Jason? How you doing? He's like, it's great. It's great. I have tons of energy. I feel awesome. My wife noticed a big difference. And I was like, amazing. Like, you want to work on like kind of the next step? He's like, not done yet. I'll tell you. I've already, I've also lost 11 kilos in the last two months. Wow. And I was like, oh, dang. So you're telling me by prioritizing your body's natural mechanisms to energy, you burn fat mm. at a higher rate than most people when they're, even they're exclusively dieting. Wow. Mind blown. So at that point I decided to kind of, I started working with more entrepreneurs and people who had, who were able to understand that energy relates to physical and financial success. So that way when I'm like, hey, don't worry about the weight loss that'll come, they can actually buy in. And that from there, that's what I wrote that up into the Million Dollar Body Method. I just kind of talk through that entire methodology and how it works for people and how you can get the best results possible. Wow. When you were detailing that, that client, it was almost like a recipe for everything not to do. It was, you know, the fast food. It was, you know, just not necessarily not having any energy. And I'd imagine that you find people in all works of walks of life, but especially busy entrepreneurs or busy executives who feel it's almost like a badge of honor that they've got to feel that way. So how do you, so apart from that client, what was the compelling reason that you jumped in and you wrote the million dollar body method? So obviously I, I like, I want to, I wanted to make an impact, right? No one, mm. no one gets into training cause they're like, I want to be rich. Tra yeah. Training so easy to get rich. Training like no, it just, that doesn't mm. that doesn't happen. So what we want to do is we want to help people. We're losing the war on obesity, Tony. Like yeah. we have the supplement industry is a three bill or as almost a five billion dollar industry last year, and wow. so and it's continuing to grow time over time over time. There's more trainers than there's ever been before, more certifications, more gyms, yet the obesity rate steadily climbs. 
Why is that? Yeah. It's because people don't understand. There's so much noise out there. So I wanted to write something in a way that made sense yeah. for people that they could pick up 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now and still get good results. My first book was called Passport Fitness. Yeah. It's a good book. It's funny. I have a lot of like stories in there. If you're traveling a lot for work, it'll help you out. But honestly, Tony, all it is is a collection of tips, things yeah. that you can apply or not apply. There's nothing that's there's nothing transformative. It's trans. It's a transactional book, right? Yeah. You read it, you get something out of it, you put it on the shelf. Great. You're on to the next million dollar body. I wanted to write as a transformation book because it, I wrote it into a four week program that anyone can pick up, walk through on their own and start to understand how nutrition actually works, right? Because mm. like, there's so much information online. We have more information than we've, we could ever know what to do with. There's yeah. millions of hours of YouTube videos uploaded every single day. So what what's missing? The action. We're missing mm. that transformation piece. And that's what I wanted this to be, is something that you could actually pick up, use, and be transformed and not just have like a, well, that was nice, next. Yeah. What was, um, you mentioned that uh, as a personal trainer, you were really effective, but then less so online. What did you see was the big reason there? Well, as a personal trainer, uh, like it was just so nice to be able to be with someone and feed off their energy. And I could see like, how are you doing? I could watch their face and like, look at all their little, little mm. cues here and there. And so uh, it was, it was crazy. One time I, I would, I did an experiment where I wore a heart rate monitor for an entire week. And so I had a couple of clients who would wear the heart rate monitor as well. Mm -hmm. And I could, we could literally watch our sessions and his heart rate would go up and mine would go up and his would come back down and mine would come back down. And yeah. I would track and I would be like in the same emotional state as my clients. So like all of that was like really helpful, you know, just to be face to face. Mm -hmm. Plus like I could see your knees a little bit off. So I go, okay, here's a little tactile, like let me press, press against me here. Okay. Let's put, let's put a band on like here. Okay. Let's drop that weight. Let's do a different weight. You know, so yeah. like I'm just, I was really focused, really like on point with each client. You lose out on a lot of that with online coaching, right? Yeah. I can't be there. I can't be poking you. I can't watch all your sets and reps. And yeah, I film a video here or there and I'll give you some feedback, but it's not the same. And what mm. I, what I thought it was, was the same thing. You do a workout with a personal trainer. You do a work with an online coach, same. Online yeah. coaching is very different. It is a lot more of a holistic, full view. What's your lifestyle? What are your habits? How do you eat? How do you prep for the food you're going to eat? How do you set up your schedule in a way that facilitates you going to the gym? A lot yeah. of what I do now, I have people go on walks. I have people walk all the time. All the workouts mm -hmm. are much easier than they were in person because I don't, they don't need to be these hard, grueling things where I'm like pushing them. Let's go. Come on. Next set. It just needs to be consistent. It needs to be effective. And it needs mm. to help them feel like they're seeing progress over time. Because if you don't see progress, you're not going to be motivated. You're going to fall off. So yeah. I confused the two. I thought they were the same. And they are totally different entities. Yeah. With um, You mentioned we're losing the battle of uh, the, the obesity battle. What sort of stats are, are sitting there in the United States now about percentages of people that are overweight or heading to obesity? Um, I was just looking at this the other day, but it, um, I think that this year is either this year or 2025. We're set to cross 40% wow. um, obesity. Wow. That was, that's, that's uh, yeah. Let me, let me just double check that. So I'm not completely. Yeah. So right. Like, so from two, two years ago, um, 30% are, uh, are overweight. Mm. Um, that, that doesn't make any sense. 10% uh, of adults are have severe obesity, 42% are obese, and then, um, uh, wow. no, sorry, 60% are overweight. So wow. we're, yeah, we're, we're really like fighting, fighting like all these other, like in this other factors, you know, whether it's mm. working from home, whether it's processed foods, whether it's information overload, there's so many things going on that are pushing people to be more and more sedentary and like having that, like that chronic disease, diabetes, obesity rate steadily rising year over year. Yeah. And you've got a real focus also on food, I, I can see. So things like uh, I'm imagining less sugar, those sorts of things. I mean, we see refined foods and we see processed foods being at the heart of many people's diets. So walk me through some really good uh, tips, especially if I'm a busy executive and I'm wanting to get some energy back. 
but I'm skipping meals or I'm having one big meal a day because of the fact that that suits my timing or my perception of time. Walk me through maybe a couple of tips that you can be looking at or providing for the listeners around food. Yeah, I think this this is a great question. And this is one thing that I, I just missed as a personal trainer because as you come in to me, we would work out really hard for an hour and then you go home and you have another 23 hours of the day to do mm. whatever. So I never, like I got good results as a personal trainer, but my results as an online coach are way, way higher because I have so much more influence and control over how people eat and kind of talking mm. through those processes. When we're on, when we get on the phone together, we're talking, I'm not necessarily telling them how to do a lunge. We're talking about how do you get more water? How do you sleep a little bit better? How should you structure mm. your breakfast? So I'll give you a couple, like two different tips. Number yep. one is make sure that you, you know exactly what you're going to do in the morning. Okay. So you have all your moves scripted out. You don't need a nap. You don't need an, like a, you have your first hour of your day. You know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to wake up. You're going to drink two glasses of water. You're going to take your vitamins. You're going to eat this, this like breakfast food, whatever that looks like. You're going to have your coffee. You don't have to make a decision because I think the decision fatigue is mm. more dangerous than necessarily like, um, just having a cookie laying around. Because if you have yeah. a cookie laying around, you've you have you've made sure you're not just like white knuckling it and going off of willpower motivation all day. You get home, and you can be like, no, that's not like that's not that doesn't serve me. Mm. But if all day long you're flying, putting out fires from one thing to the next, this is like this is the, what we do as leaders, right? We're in the business of putting out fires, no matter what your actual business is. So then you get home and you're like, Ugh. and there's a cookie laying out there. <laughs> you don't think you just eat it because you're yeah. worn out. You have decision fatigue, right? So yeah. that's not even a nutrition tip. That's a, that's a scheduling. That's a lifestyle tip. Yeah. The second thing is a, is not a eat more of eat more of this. Well, you should eat more protein. That's a bonus, but mm. it's do not snack, never snack. You know, a lot of, do you know where the, like the idea of six meals per day comes from Tony? Yeah. You know this? Yeah, I I was on a diet there going back ten, probably ten eleven years ago. There was high, moderate protein and low carb, okay. and we were we were eating every I think three hours. What, during, why did they say to eat every three hours? Do you remember? Uh, to boost and build your metabolism. Correct. Right. Mm. Well, the interesting thing about that is that is complete and utter bullshit. You don't <laughs> build your metabolism while you're eating. In mm. fact, the opposite can be true. You actually can improve your metabolic function by fasting and not eating. So here's what happens. Mm. Yep. So here's what happens. When you eat food, your body pulls blood from your brain and your appendages into your gut for digestion. You've ever yep. had like, um, I don't know if you've ever had on the typical like American Thanksgiving dinner, but we're gluttonous assholes. And so what we do is mm. we just eat until we're sick and then we just lay around and be like, oh no, it's the tryptophan. And we're like, we're not like, there's no tryptophan in like that fourth <laughs> serving of, of mashed potatoes. We're just yeah. gluttons. Yeah. So we get all tired, right? You know, like you have like a big burrito or something like that. And you want to lay under your desk yeah. and take a nap. Okay. Yeah. So what happens is your body shifts into rest and digest mode. You have automatically flipped the switch on your body's natural rhythms mm. to be like, to go from what's called sympathetic nervous system dominance. That's our, that's our shake and bake. That's like, that's hunting. Mm. Let's get after it. You know, that's what we want to parasympathetic nervous system dominance. That's rest and digest. Let's chill out. Let's fall asleep. And so you, de you've deliberately taken your body and go like, pop sleep. And in the middle of the day, we don't need that sort of thing. So we don't want to be eating all the time. It doesn't boost your metabolic function. All it does is slow you down. The reason wow. that six meals per day became popular is because of a company called metrics, M E T R X met, met RX. Yeah. And here's what happened is in, in like the late eighties, early nineties, they came out with a protein powder. Cool. Right. And they're like, how do we sell more protein powders? Someone's, someone had a genius idea, and it's, and it's like, this is top tier marketing. This is incredible. They go, you know what we need to do? You need to eat three foods, food, food meals, three, <laughs> three regular meals mm. per day, Tony. And then you need to have three protein shakes per day for the uh, metabolism. That's right, mm. metabolism. So it was, a, wow. it was a cleverly designed marketing tactic to yeah. sell more protein in the same way that the beers is like, you need to, you need to spend three months of your salary on a diamond, you know, mm. and that just became like common knowledge that has been such a cleverly and a clever and insidious wow. marketing ploy that we're that I'm still fighting against that to this day. Cause people believe that. And we hear it all the time online parroted. Mm. Wow. That interesting? It is. So is there a level of eating? So, so 
entrepreneurs, uh, you're in a startup, you, it's hectic, there's a lot of fast-paced energy around, there's a built-up perception that you've got to match that energy at all times. Um, is there an optimum level of eating that they should be doing? Is there, like, should they? Like, it, breakfast is one of the most debatable meals. Some people will say, never have breakfast, that's during my fast. Other people will say, you've always got to have breakfast. Um, in your in your what you've seen, what you've researched, what you've experienced, is breakfast the starting point for the day? And then what is that level of eating for say a high paced executive or an entrepreneur that they should be looking at? Okay, great question. I'm glad you brought that up because I'll give you I'll kinda of give you the answer to that question, then I'll give you like kind of just a broad strokes. You can dive into like the more of the details in here. Uh, yeah. in the book later. And if you're, if you're, uh, if you want Tony, I can give out a free copy of that book to anyone who oh. uh, wants to check it out. Like a, just an ebook. Awesome. Yeah. So basically what I found personally is that fasting is awesome. A lot of people do like 16 hour fast with an eight hour feeding window. That's great. It can be, definitely be effective. I did that for 18 months personally, but the problem that came from that was that when people would eat their first meal of the day, midday lunchtime meal, yeah. they would eat a big meal. And then the rest of their afternoon would be spent in that parasympathetic uh, nervous system dominance, right? So we yeah. are going, we're doing good. We're on it all morning. We feel great. And then we are snoozing all afternoon. And that's not acceptable for a lot of us yeah. like, because then we're taking two hours of the work and we're cramming into four hours, you know, because we're not being effective. We're mental acuity is on a point. We're not hungry. So what the, the better option that I found for most people is having a light breakfast that's based on proteins and fats. Okay. Then we're gonna have a light lunch that's based on proteins, fats, and vegetables. Okay. And then at dinner time, we're gonna have a much bigger meal that has carbohydrates in it as a way of manufacturing that that parasympathetic nervous system dominance, shifting mm. that rest and digest, and getting our body geared up for sleep in the way that our, we are naturally inclined to do, right? So rather than doing these kind of spikes and dips all day long, we eliminate most of our carbohydrates during the day. We allow ourselves to have this, slew, this smooth, slow, slow release of energy from the food yeah. we're eating. And then at night, we don't have to stress about, oh, did I, did I, am I having too much? I got to cut back on this. I can only have this little piece. Like we're going out to client dinners. We're eating, we're drinking alcohol. We're having, mm. we're having dinner times with our family. We're breaking bread with our friends. Let's not like, let's not neglect how important those things are. Instead, mm. let's set up our day in a way that gives us the ability to eat at night in an enjoyable fashion without mm. sacrificing our physique or our energy during the day. Wow. And, and. A large, uh, the the large meal being dinner, it's almost. I, I I was talking to someone just recently, and they were saying dinner's got to be your smallest meal. So th there's just so much information right. out there. And is Breakfast it about like a pop? king, lunch like a prince, yep. dinner like a pauper. You've heard that one before. Yeah. So is it about finding something that works for you, or is there some general guidelines that anybody can follow? Yeah, that's a great question. And I don't I don't want to sit here and say, Tony, this is the number one way that people should eat. And if you don't eat mm. like this, you're completely missing the point. There's yeah. a lot of effective diets out there. If you're looking to lose weight, you could do it on a keto diet. You can do it on paleo. You could do it a whole mm. 30. You can use Mediterranean. You can use Atkins. You could do fasting. You can do all sorts of things. So it's really all about finding what works for you. But the nice thing about what I've created here is that it's not necessarily a diet. It's mm. a framework. Yeah. So you can take your Mediterranean and plop it right into my million dollar body method. You can do that with paleo. You can do it with keto. You can do it with whatever, whatever foods you like. What I'm trying to do is showcase to people how you can eat in a way that creates energy. And if you're eating in a way that show that, that increases energy and decreases your hunger cravings all day long, then your body's mm. going to be more effective at burning fat. So like yeah. the problem with the breakfast, like a king, lunch, like a prince, dinner, like a pauper is that we are going now with a, with a, what's what I think of as the um, first in first out or FIFO method of nutrition. Yeah. So if you ever, like I worked at a grocery store when I was 17, I was responsible for restocking all the foods. So, you know, you, someone comes in, they take milk off the shelf. Well, I don't take the milk, the new milk and put it right back where they took it from. Right. So the next person takes the new milk and I put a new milk mm -hmm. in there and they take it out. But that's what we do when we eat big meals all day. We have a lot of carbohydrates. We teach our body, hey, mm -hmm. let's burn the sugar off, the carbohydrates off of the food we just ate. We turn our bodies into these sugar-burning machines. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you 
eat the food, you burn the food, you eat the food, you burn the food. Oh, you ate a little too much? Well, we're going to store the rest of that, and then, okay, back to burn the food, eat the food, burn the food, eat the food. In reality, what we need to be doing is the lifo, last in, first out, okay? So it's because yeah. someone pulls from the, the milk, right? I come around back, and I plop that back in, so now the newest stuff is in the back. Yeah. So you're pulling from the last, the oldest stuff, right? Smells a lot better, grocery stores like that, you know. <laughs> we already have stored energy. We have it right yeah. here. You know, we have it in our legs. We have it in our butt. You know, even if you're like, man, I'm super ripped, whatever else, we still have a little bit of stored energy. We want to use that. We want to teach our body, use stored energy to create this abundance of energy and excitement and focus and be able to mm. manufacture it, turn it on at will, right? I want, like, yeah. you ever had that day where you're like, man, I'm killing it. It's an yeah. awesome day. I want you to be able to do that when you want to, not just randomly. Mm. So in order to okay. do that, we keep our body attuned to a fat burning rhythm. So yeah. in the, for breakfast, you have protein and you have fats. Your body's already like, okay, we don't have any carbs to burn off. So I'm going to pull a little bit more from our stored, stored reserves of fat mm. because it's easier to mobilize those than it is to take the protein and turn it into sugar and then turn it and then burn it. That's a really yeah. hard process. It's very expensive. So just a simple, t simple tweak, ditch the banana, ditch the bagel, protein, fats in the morning okay yeah what about sugar so one of the books that uh i had a real lasting impact on me is a book called sweet poison by david gillespie and he was one of the first people that really came out and started talking about the evils of sugar so what what are your thoughts and how do people detox from sugar because that can be painful in itself i'm imagining yeah, you're totally right. And I think that's like the best way to do that is cold turkey. So I, mm. I think that like you're right, having like a lot of sugar, never any good because what happens is we start feeding this bacteria in our gut, okay? And this bacteria mm. will have a direct access line to your brain. So when you feed your, your, your gut sugar, it eats the sugar up and it's like, yeah. And so it sends you, it sends a little note to your brain, goes, hey, can we get some more sugar down here? Your body's like, well, didn't we just eat? Like, what's going on with that? And it's like, sugar, get it to me. And so the more you feed the bacteria, the more mm. it asks for more and more and more, the more that bacteria grows. Right? Yeah. So now all of the day long, you're hungry at, at 7 a.m. You're hungry at 9 a.m. You're hungry at noon. You're hungry at 3. Yeah. You're hungry at 5. You're hungry at 7. You're hungry at 9 p.m. You're going into the, the refrigerator, and suddenly you're like, I guess I'll have an old piece of bread and a slice of cheese because I don't know why I'm just so hungry. But that's that sugar talking. That's that bacteria mm. in your in your gut. That's that's that wants more sugar, so it can have a really deleterious effect on our mental state and our cravings. And when our cravings are out of whack, our energy is out of whack. They, those two things can't exist in a vacuum. They exist together. So yeah. in order to, if you're feeling like I don't know, should I do any of the sugar detox? Check your cravings. Are you yeah. having those effects between meals and after dinners? You need a sugar detox. Are you always wanting something sweet after you eat? You need a sugar detox. And the mm. best way to do that is just by taking a five day, five day like the like time to like detox from all processed sugars. Easy. Yeah. I'd probably leave fruits out of it just to make it easier on yourself. And then on day four or five, Tony, the secret here, and we can talk about a little more kind of like this is like this is this is the secret. This thing works yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Is a twenty four to forty eight hour fast. Water, green tea, black coffee, no calories. Mm. What that does is it, it presses the restore factory settings on your body. So now yeah. our stomach shrinks, our cravings decrease, that sugar, that bacteria in our stomach that's like, hey, give me that sugar. Like it is it gets muted because that kind of those some of that extra bacteria will die off. Yeah. And then you get to the point where you're like, I have energy, I feel really good, and I don't need to eat a lot. I'm not having cravings right now. So it's a perfect reset. Plus, you have a ton of other intangible benefits between the autophagy process, your body pulling out old cells, broken down cells, and replacing them and repairing them. Um, re, like Again, like we talked about earlier, helping your mm. metabolism kick up, helping you have a, your body have a better relationship with insulin. Insulin is the, is the hormone that stores fat or builds muscle. It's really it's, it's in, integral to our, uh, to our health. Mm. So it's just this really great reset process that burns fat, helps your brain, helps you uh, detox from sugar. So get that fast Thanks. going. Yeah, and we'll be sharing that link with the audience, that uh, free five-day sugar detox that you awesome. just spoke about. So 
I, I think that that's really important because my, I guess my final question on your specialty is that we often hear about people undertaking a cleanse, you know, a cleanse of the system. And, you know, sometimes that's you're taking a liquid or, or other times it might be a pill. What are your thoughts and does that fit in with the regime that you're speaking around? So... This is, I'm so glad you asked this question. So there's a, I have a couple answers. Number one is you might have, like we talked about the the sugar detox, the five day sugar detox. Mm. Here's the uh, here's the fine print on that. You don't have to buy anything for it. The best two <laughs> detoxification things are not eating and water. Those are free. Mm. So when people try to sell you a cleanse, a detox, an aloe vera gel, something for your liver health, all of mm. that is horseshit. None of that works. Your body doesn't need it. We have these amazing things in our body, our livers, our kidneys that do all the cleansing for you. So in order to facilitate that or to help them out, the people would be like, oh yeah, you need to have activated charcoal. No, you need to drink more water. It's okay. Like, <laughs> So most of the time I will say cleanse. I will say detox because I really believe in, again, like I'm not trying to, to make people feel dumb for saying something. Yeah. I want, if, they, if they say they're like, I'm looking for a sugar detox. I'm like, here you go. By the way, here's the real way to do it. You don't need to pay me any money for pills. Mm. You know, I want to like, I want to, I want to burn my gut. I'm like, great. Here's the real way to do it. Just, it just, we're just going to get some fasting going. Okay. You don't need to buy a fat burner. You don't need to buy a thermogenic yeah. because I think again, the, the, like the supplement industry preys on people like this and they just are like, yeah, you want, like, you want to have these big power muscles. You got to have this big scoop laundry detergent scoop mm. worth of protein. You look at the ingredients, <laughs> you're like, man, that's 80% sugar. Yeah. So it just like, there's no, there's no checks and balances in that. So I try to show up more often because I feel like if I can, if I can give people what they're like, I can show up with what they're asking for, but deliver the thing that they need, then I'm yeah. serving the community. Absolutely. So fasting and water. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> And I go into a little bit more detail. I have like, a, here's a salad you can make that's really like, that's engineered to have like a, like a huge hit of mm. vitamins, minerals, and, and phytonutrients. Here's how to upgrade your water to some lemon, some apple cider vinegar, like a couple of things like that that are like little things make a difference. Excellent. But it, you don't have to go buy a, buy a cleanse. You don't have to put a wrap on. You don't have to starve yourself into a coffee enema. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, Nate, who's inspired you in your leadership journey? So, I, one of my business coaches, he's a guy from Canada, his name's Dave Smith. That guy inspires the hell out of me because he is a man of integrity mm. and he won't compromise integrity for anything money, fame, fortune, any of that. Like, he just like, he does the right thing. And that's someone I uh, strive to be like. My dad inspires me. My dad said one time to me, hey, Nate, if one man can do it, another man can too. If someone can do it, you can do that too. And I'd always think about that quote when I'm mm. creating, building. Like I, I had that thought a million times while I was writing this book. I was like, <laughs> I, I, can, I can do it. I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> um, and then my buddy Nick Trevelyan inspires me. He's a, he's a coach. He helps people uh, publish their books online. He helps people with their authors, like, like course creators and, and people like release their knowledge to the world. But he's mm. just such a, like, if you think I talk fast, have a lot of energy, this dude is like, <laughs> out of this world. What about uh, your relationship with Farley and uh, Nate? <laughs> what does that look like? Oh, just, we are, we are cuddle buddies. Me and failure, <laughs> we are, we're good friends. I mean, I fail all the time. I suck at everything. I, <laughs> I uh, went to, a did a stand-up comedy class like, uh, like two months ago. Yeah, and I showed up, and I was like, "I'm a kind of a funny guy. I make jokes in conversations. If you know me, you'd be like, oh, he's Nate's funny, you know.'" And so I showed up, and I was like, "I got this." And I went, and I was like, "Here's some stuff. Here, like, what do you guys think about this?" And the guy was like, "Boo! All of that sucks." And I was like, okay, <laughs> "He's like, you can't say any of that stuff. You got to go rewrite it all." And I was like, "Got it." I've also this is wow. my fourth business, Million Dollar Body Method. This is the fourth business that I've built. Yeah. Three, the first three though complete failures abject yeah. failures my first one was called grab and go workout i was like you know what i'm gonna build the itunes store for workouts 99 cents mm. you buy a workout 3.99 you buy the whole album let's go spent thousands of hours on this in downtown seattle at coffee shops working on stuff building logos doing this zero purchases tony wow. nobody not even my mom bought one so that's i could go yeah. on, i could go on and on and on i i, I suck <laughs> And you've obviously rebounded from them pretty well, but Nate. Yeah, I mean, like I, I, I don't really, I honestly don't believe in failures. I believe in lessons. 
Um, so like it sucks in the moment. And I'm like, wow, that was a huge waste of time and money and resources. What did I learn? And mm. what can I take into the next thing? Cause I'm not going to, yeah. um, like, like, like my dad said, if one person can do it, another can too. And my, in my mind, like that's something I always try to like ingrain in my clients and it's almost like for myself as well. But yeah. in fitness, in business, you cannot lose if you don't quit. Mm, so yeah, yeah, I might've taken a loss there, but like, I'm not going to stop. That's not the end yeah. of the road for me. Yeah. What, what's next and how do I improve upon it? How do I get better? So I don't take failures. I take lessons. With um, you being an author and a, and a best-selling author with the, uh, with the book, what, is there a book that's had the biggest impact on you? Mm, that's a good question. I feel like my go-to book when people ask me like what's like what's a book you recommend or, would lo or love is a book by Chris Voss called Never Split the Difference. Fantastic! It's a, he's a he was a FBI hostage negotiator and now he works yeah. for a company called Black Swan, where he helps he goes into businesses to consult on negotiation and strategy. So it's just an incredible book. I read it once a year. And it really helps me with my just like interpersonal communication. And every time after I read it, I go to the store and I'm always asking people weird stuff. I'm like, can I just have one piece of gum out of here? And they're like, what are you talking about, man? And I'm like, so is that a no or would it be crazy to ask? <laughs> <laughs> What's the vision for you moving forward? What does it look like? Time freedom, location freedom. I've had a kind of a, I'll call it an epiphany this year. I've been, yeah. a, I've been kind of in, like, I, I'm in the, fit, like, the fitness coaching space, but I've also done a little bit of, like, business coaching for other personal trainers who are bringing their businesses online where I can yeah. teach them some of the lessons that I've learned over the years. And it's easy to get caught up in the rat race and, like, okay, well, you do you do this much money and now you want to do this much money and now you want to do a million dollars and now you want to get to, like, the next level. And I kind of get got tied up in that and I was, like, basing my self-worth on my financial success. Mm. When I took a step back and I looked at it, that's not like, that doesn't change my life. What changes my life is having my afternoons free to play with my daughter. What changes yeah. my life is being able to take my wife to breakfast on Saturday mornings, not being stuck at my computer, working on programs, doing these sorts of things. So the goal for me is to be able to work where I want to, when I want to, and still be able to deliver high quality, like high quality results to the clients who have trusted me with their fitness. Excellent. That's a, that's a wonderful vision to have and just being able to have those choices um, to be able to do that, I think, is is really critical for anyone that's looking to succeed in both business and, um, I guess, in term in general life. So, Nate, I've got no doubt that people have been inspired by your energy during this particular conversation. Did that come through can, at all? I couldn't tell. Yeah, I, I think it did. I think <laughs> it did just a little bit. So, so how can people connect with you? You can find me on Instagram, Million Dollar Body Method at Million Dollar Body Method. Um, I've got an incredible community on Facebook that I love. It's called Burn, uh, Lose Your Gut, Eat More Tacos, Never Track Calories. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like I, that's where I put out my highest quality like trainings and stuff like that. I put out a meal plan in there last week. You know, I got some like exercises that I'm always like sharing with stuff. So if you want to join us there, you can go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group. We'll get you in there. Yeah. Excellent. And as I said, you've got a free five-day sugar detox. We'll make sure that we've got all those links in the show notes for our um, our listeners. Nate, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I really do appreciate you investing in today's leaders. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Tony. This was a lot of fun. And now it's time for Tony's Two Cents. Now I can hear the questions coming through right now. How do I get energy like that? Well, Nate certainly knows his stuff. And as I'm now someone putting his million-dollar body method into my structured day, I can also see and be a positive advocate for this particular shift. Now, the key for today's leaders is not to accept the established norms that may be evident in your organisation. You know the one, the work hard and play hard mentality, it's still evident in so many organisations and it's usually fed from the top. Now it stands to reason that sustained performance comes from people tuned in to sustained performance. People who are equipped for sustained performance. People honed and prepared for sustained performance. 
and certainly not someone who's on the brink of a physical and a mental breakdown coming from some poor lifestyle choices and burning the candles at both ends. Now, hopefully you've taken some great tips and strategies away from our conversation today with Nate. And once again, I just want to thank Nate for coming on and investing in today's leaders. And as per always, his links are in the show notes. If you're looking to build better leadership skills, check out the Today's Leader website at todaysleader.com.au. We really are driving a leadership revolution to build tomorrow's best leaders today. Today's Leader is a collective, the mindset to make a difference, the ability to create an impact. Think and Grow Business hosts our Today's Leader Mastermind. Think and Grow Business, where we focus on personal, professional and business growth, book your free 30-minute discovery call right from the homepage at thinkandgrowbusiness.com.au. Don't forget, wherever you are, you are standing stronger, braver and wiser. Don't forget the golden rule. Don't be an arsehole. I'll see you all again next week. Bye for now.